Okay, today we're going to get to grips with why naltrexone might be helpful with alcohol addiction. All right, so if you've been prescribed naltrexone or you're trying to figure out how this works, this is the video for you. Hey everyone, Jess and Al from thepsychcollective.com. Jess Ogar, clinical psychologist. Al Briscoe, a psychiatrist. Hi, thanks for joining us. Okay, so today we're going to talk about naltrexone in the context of alcohol addiction. Yes, yes. So naltrexone is commonly used for opioid addiction. So you is might it? be thinking, why oh, okay. would we be using it for alcohol? Alcohol is nothing like an opioid. Does it use the same receptors? Eh, this is the thing. It's got to do with the reward pathway. Right. Okay. okay. So that's how it works. All right. Okay. All right. So if we want to try and understand how it works with alcohol, we've got to kind of back right track. Okay. Okay. So let's go right back. So um, now I, I guess you need to you need to have a model of addiction to really yep. kind of you know to proceed with this. So yep. some people think it's just a biological phenomenon, right? Yeah. I don't buy that. No. Okay. Um, there's a root cause of addiction. Yeah. Okay. Past pain, emotional wounds, trauma, childhood stuff, it it, it, it comes from somewhere. It doesn't yeah. come out of the clean blue sky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe in some situations it might, but I think in the majority of situations there is a root cause. Yeah, biopsychosocial model, but there's definitely psycho and social in it. It's not yeah. just biological. Okay. okay, so from the addiction, what do we get? So emotional. Well, well it's not so much from the addiction, from the well, past from, pain. Yeah, yeah right. from the past pain, we have this persistent negative emotional state. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because so we're we in feel, pain and we've got. Yeah, wounds. we feel terrible about things. Yeah. Okay. And also, we can't generate positive emotional states. Okay. All right. So that's not the same thing. They're kind of. They sound like the opposite of one thing, but they're kind of two different things. It's like two sides of the same coin. Sort kind of. of yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Okay. So we can we can neither get out of our negative state nor can we enter into a positive state. Okay. All so right. Limbo there. Yeah, yeah, it's not much fun. So what do you do about that? Well, bing, 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 alcohol, right? So what does alcohol do? It numbs the negative emotional state. Yep. I don't feel so awful, okay? Yeah. But the other thing does is it actually activates, in, not in everyone, but in a lot of people, it activates the reward system. Okay, so what is this reward system? Okay, so it's, it's complicated and it's messy, okay? But basically, it's where alcohol activates, it, it, it helps parts of the brain light up that make you feel good. Okay. okay, that's the, the nuts and bolts. Dopamine involved in it? Dopamine and opioid receptors. And it's complicated and, it, you know, I don't think it's fully understood. Okay. okay. But let's just say that there's not much doubt about this. Okay. Yep. It, it activates the reward system. Okay. Okay. So that's the nuts and bolts of addiction, really. Okay. In particular with alcohol. So yeah. now we've got... I drink the alcohol because it makes me feel better. Yeah. And numbs my pain. Yes. Double whammy. Okay. That feel, makes sense. Takes away the feel bad, gives me the feel good. Why wouldn't you, right? Like, like, why wouldn't you? Okay. Well, because eventually you reach a point where there's well, more it might be better. It might be better to deal with the root cause. And, and that's where we see people repeatedly attempting to engage in kind of rehab and stuff like that because they may deal with... But how much of this is actually happening well, in but, but that's what I'm saying, because that's yeah. why people kind of need to keep coming back in a rehab if this hasn't been fully resolved. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah, so if you don't deal with the root cause, you're sort of, you know, you're stuck walking on a tightrope the whole time. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so the, but we're talking about naltrexone, right? We're talking about naltrexone. So how does naltrexone affect this? Okay, well, it doesn't do anything about your negative emotional states. It doesn't help you feel better. Okay. okay? All right. So, well, it doesn't stop you from feeling bad. Thank you. It doesn't stop you from feeling bad more precisely. Yes. Okay. But what it does is it removes the reward effect that the okay. alcohol provides you. Okay. Okay. So let me give you an example. Yeah. So this this is this is sort of was summed up beautifully by a patient. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, he described his drinking pattern thusly. All right. He'd get together with a group of friends. He would pour everyone a glass of wine, including oh, himself. Good host. Oh, great host. Okay. Um, he would be the first to finish his glass. Yeah. Okay. And most of the glasses would still be quite full. All right. But no worries, being the good host, he'd top up everyone else's glass, including, including his, his own. own. Yeah. Right. And off to the races he'd go, so, so to speak. Okay. Okay. However, after two days only of naltrexone, the opposite occurred. Okay. okay. So, so he would fill up everyone's glasses, including his own. All right. Mm -hmm. He might have a little, he'll have a little sip, put it back down. Everyone else is sip, sip, sipping away. Mm -hmm. All right. Everyone else has finished their glasses of wine. His is still full. And he's stunned. Well, how mm -hmm. could this be? So now he's pouring everyone. And he said getting through the glass was kind of a chore. Like effortful? Yeah. So basically what's going on is there's a very subtle reinforcement every time you have it, if you're predisposed, there's a subtle reinforcement every time you're having a sip of wine. It's like, ooh, that's... Because you're not chugging a glass of wine. No. You have a little sip, feels good, put it down. Ooh, looking forward to the next one. Ooh, I'm ready for the next one. 
little sip, put it okay. down. The naltrexone interferes with that. Yeah, right. Okay? Such that you have a little sip. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't really feel like anymore. I'll leave that down. Okay, maybe wine doesn't taste as good as we think it does, right? Whoa. Maybe it's more than a water. I don't know, controversial, right? So that's what naltrexone does. So it does nothing to deal with this. Well, I mean, is this just a bad note effect for addiction? Is that what it is? Well, look, it's a, maybe it's a starting place, though. Okay, maybe it's a starting place. Okay, because, because if you take yeah. out the alcohol, then you don't have the numbing. So then because the presence of this, you've then got the capacity to work on this. Well, yeah, if you can have it all the time, it's hard for you to do anything. About yeah, it. and I mean, I know this from when I did my therapy with patients. If they're in active addiction and we've got to do trauma work, I won't start the trauma work until we've been able to stabilise the addiction because it interferes with... I can't help them resolve their trauma yeah. if they can't feel the effects of their trauma. Yeah, but if the primary reason that they're drinking... All right, is because they're numbing their emotional pain. Yeah. Now, Trexone is probably not going to do anything, right? Well, if it in, if it stops them from drinking the pain, so then we can get to the emotional wounds, then it's doing something. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's no, giving it, it's scaffolding. It's not, it's, it gives them a platform to be able to work from. It's not actually touching the negative emotional state. All it's doing is not offering them reinforcement. Yeah, okay. So then now Trexone stops this, and then I come in and we can do the work in therapy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So then Trexone hopefully lessens the chance of you getting hammered all the time. Okay. All right, which means that you're more lucid, okay? Yeah. Which means that you're amenable to doing the psychological work to deal with other causes. But does it increase your distress? Because you've 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 effectively taken away your coping strategies. You've taken away the thing that removes your negative state, yeah. which leaves you with your negative state. So how much does distress go up? Yeah, well, absolutely. Why wouldn't it? Because I mean, look, going from drinking a lot to drinking zero, if you're addicted to alcohol, mm. is distressing. Yeah. And this is where I would say to kind of my patients, if you're going to take away a maladaptive coping strategy, you need to substitute it with something more skillful. Otherwise, you create a vacuum yeah. and you're more likely to relapse. Yeah, I agree with that. So, yeah, exactly. It's If, if you buy that the root cause of addiction has got to do with past pain, you've got to do something about that. Yes. Okay? Yeah. All right? And if you don't, your chance of relapse yeah. goes up. Okay. That's it. Well, hopefully that's answered some questions for you on Naltrexone. If you've got any more further questions on Naltrexone or addiction, leave us some comments. Hit that like and subscribe button. Check out the website, Facebook, Instagram, sitecollective.com. And we shall see you next time. Thanks, guys. See Thanks, ya. Guys.